G'day there, wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of The Finnovator. I'm Stuart Bell, and today's episode, I was actually genuinely on the fence about whether to share it, uh, but the more and more I thought about it, and given everything that's going on in the world right now, all of the uncertainty, all of the challenging events, I decided that, you know what, this is probably a module that is as relevant as it ever is. It was recorded at the beginning of the COVID uh, pandemic. This was a time when my business changed completely. Uh, I went from running live two-day events uh, and, and, and really working with not just one-on-one with businesses, but, but having a fantastic level of peer engagement to suddenly all of that was shut down. Every single workshop I was running for institutions, every speaking gig, the opportunity to get together uh, was just had gone in a second. And in particular, I recognized that a lot of my, a lot of my clients I was working with were asking some real questions about how they were going to manage client engagement when they couldn't even sit in front of clients. And at the time, the idea of Zooming uh, existing clients was still still not a majority thing. And the idea of engaging with new clients without actually meeting them face-to-face was almost unknown. And we now look back on it and we realize a lot of the things that we thought were going to be challenges end up just being transformational. Uh, and, you know, I think coming off the back of the pandemic, uh, the world that was, was very different from what we thought it would be going in. Um, So this is called communication in a crisis. And interestingly, this is as relevant now as it's ever been. Uh, The content that I created had actually come about from years of working with firms uh, who had got better at communicating with clients, in particular about market forces and market changes and volatility. You know, there's two types of firms out there, I've always thought. There's those firms who, when market volatility happens, they have to get on the front foot, answer a lot of questions, and really calm their clients down. And there's the other kind of cl- who, when market volatility comes, because of the conversations they've set in advance, because their clients don't necessarily see their role as uh, just about market performance or see market performance or consistent, you know, year after year positive returns as being realistic. That whole every year, one year in four, expect a negative return. Uh, as a result of that kind of communication, and preempting, they, they didn't get any calls at all. So in this one, I'm going to unpack. What do you do when times are tough? What do you do when markets are not doing what they should do, but rather doing what they usually do? What do you do when there are events happening that could potentially make people panic and cause concern? Uh, we're talking about how to do this, how to get on the front foot. And as I said, I think it's as relevant now as it's ever been. And I think it's something that when you can do from the very beginning, it sets the tone for client relationships year after year after year. Hope you enjoy it. This is Communication in a Crisis. Communicating in a crisis. And uh, the big idea behind running this one, the way I, I have, is, you know, I don't know, most of you would have noticed this. And if you haven't, I'm glad to sort of share this with you because there was, a, um, there was an article that came out via AFA. Noni, shh, your voice down. Um, there's an article. Say hi to everyone, Noni. There you go. There was an article that came out in the IFA, I think, uh, about two weeks ago. And it was from a piece of research that was done by uh, MLC around the fact that advisors now rank financial advisors as uh, advisors were ranked as the most trusted source of financial information amid the pandemic. And you go back to not even a year ago when there were articles coming out left, right, and center about financial advisors being too big, too expensive, can't be trusted. And I think the scale of that change. Uh, firstly, I think it's fantastic. I think it, it's really, I think it, it really is, um, it's worth congratulating everybody here because I'm, I have no doubt that as soon as what happened happened, everybody got on the bar, they got on the front foot, they had conversations they needed to. And they, they you know, one of those people who, I guess there's two kinds of people. There's those that are hiding and those that step forward into the problem. And, and I think most of the people in the industry have stepped forward into it. I think it's something we really need to sort of congratulate ourselves for. And it presents a real opportunity yeah, right to be there and to be that information because people have this. Maybe some of you will have experienced that. People are now a lot more, I guess, on the front foot with this stuff. And there's a really good reason for it. If we were talking about your, uh, one of the, the models we could talk about is something I call nurture mapping, which is when you're trying to market to a certain market, whether they're retirees, business professionals, or Gen Y, Gen X families, one of the most important things is to understand where they're at on their journey. And generally speaking, people are either sort of completely unaware of uh, whether they have a need for something, which is the left-hand side here, or they 
aware of it, they've got a problem, they can be aware that there are solutions out there to help them with it, or they can uh, be sort of already sold in a particular solution. And I think, in short, I'll get, I'll get to the point. The reason why people are more likely to engage and more likely to trust it is because the, what's happened recently has moved people from, I don't have a problem, I don't need help, to suddenly very aware they've got a problem and very aware they need help. And on top of that, that's why I think this is an opportunity, not just to reach out there and help clients, but also to have some of those conversations about what people might or should need to do at a time when they're very aware of the need. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. I'm going to pop that uh, worksheet in the chat box for those of you who uh, rocked in a bit a little bit late. But I'd love to know. I don't want this to necessarily be about what I want to talk about. Uh, so what are your biggest questions about communicating with clients right now? What are the reasons that have brought you here today? And what are the things that you'd like to cover off if we get if we if we can pop into the chat box and let me know james welcome man jeffrey good to have you on board uh we've got hayden anthony welcome i think it's your first time kathy let me know what's your biggest martin dude welcome uh haven't seen the worksheet come through that's because uh try now here we go thank you how much is too much good question jeff let's chat let's definitely chat about that one how much is too much i think that's a really good point to make uh, what else? What else do you want to talk about with client communications other than how much is too much, which I think is a good one. Let me just do one thing. Uh, how much is Mario's question? Yep. We're going to talk about that one because I think it's not necessarily just about how much is too much. It's also a question of what you're actually communicating as well. So what else? Should most comms be telephone versus video or email? That's a good one, Martin. So let's we'll talk about that one as well. And that's going to talk to a lot of I guess it's going to talk to a lot of the scale issue, which is if you're having a conversation about something, at what point do you reckon there may be more than one client who's thinking about that? What not to do? Anthony, we can certainly talk about that. Definitely. Too much detail, says Kathy. What is too much detail? Perfect. Uh, any other questions? Then how much is too much? How not to put too much detail in there? Uh, and is it better to say we are here if you have questions or to send out newsletters with info? Uh, good question, Kathy. The answer is saying we are here if you need something puts it on the client to, to know what they need to talk about. So no, you don't just say we are here. Um, you need to step into it. And the second part is newsletters with information are not probably what's needed right now. We need to kind of, kind of go a bit more, uh, sort of a bit more focused on that, if that makes sense. Should we have themes, says James? The answer is yes. But I think when I show you where you're going to get the themes from, it's going to make sort of sense as well. So is there anything else other than much is too much how do we avoid the detail thing do we just send out information do we do something a little bit differently should we have themes all that sort of stuff anything else people want to talk about or will that do us if we get to all of that cool i'll assume that's sort of uh that's sort of where we're at can everyone see my slides okay is everyone working is this working for everybody as we're speaking just want to make sure the tech is still doing what it's supposed to do i'm going to take that as a yes yes beautiful mario thank you so let me sort of um, outline, if you try and communicate the way most businesses do or traditionally have at the, at the moment, there's a few challenges that many people hit. The first one I, I think is blank page fever. I don't know if you've ever experienced this where you have a vibe with something that you want to communicate and then you sit down and try and write something and you just go blank. You don't know what to write about. We do start writing and it's long and wordy and it's all over the shop. Uh, white page fever, blank page fever, whatever you want to call it, is definitely an issue. The other one is maybe you've done this in the past when you start marketing, but it's inconsistent. You know, you do some of it, uh, but you don't really do it well enough. Or, you know, you do it for a week or two and then it fades away. The other one is I think people get put off by the idea they've got to, they've got to do long form. Or it takes a long time to get it out and then you've got to rewrite it and work it. And as a result, you end up sort of falling prey to, I want to get something out, I want to communicate Next thing, you know, weeks have passed, you're still working on getting this article just right. I think the real danger, if, if we don't do something right here and now, is that kind of whole, if you're kind of out of sight right now, if you, they're not hearing from you at a time when obviously it's needed, then potentially it's just you kind of drift out and you, you miss an opportunity, but also they kind of go, well, at the time when I wanted to hear or would have liked to hear, you weren't one of the ones communicating. I think if we get this right and we follow some of the structure I'm going to show you here, you kind of get, you get topics, you get articles that write themselves. Stephen King, uh, is one of his best books I've ever read about writing, Stephen King on writing. Um, great book. But he's one of the most prolific writers. 
uh, I think, on the planet. I mean, there's a few of them, but he is one of them. And he has just perfected this art. Where he writes the structure, the topics, the way he structures the story, that he can just jump in, produce the story, and it's a good story every single time. I think if you get this right, it becomes regular. Seth Godin is a classic example of this. For those who don't know Seth, it's probably the best marketing guru on the planet. And as you can see, he, he's one of his things he's got going is 98.8% of the uh, uh, production rate. In other words, he produced, for, for the last five years, he has published at least one blog every single 98.8% of the days, which is, I think he's missed, what, 22 days in five years. And there's a reason why that, that works. And it works because of the format. And he's short form. He's very simple. And he just puts ideas out there. I think what, we, what I'd love for everybody who's here is as a result of what you do during this period, as a result of the communications you put out, you build an audience. You build a bunch of clients who look for your stuff, rely on it, love it, share it. Hello. <laughs> They share it. Uh, maybe even they, uh, let's just over focus that one. Maybe even you share it with your strategic partners, which we'll talk, talk about next week. Um, and on top of that, we get this really right. We're top of mind. We're top of mind with our clients. We're top of mind with our uh, referral partners. It all kind of works well. Does that make sense? Uh, just out of interest, is there any one of those areas that when you've done, I think, you struggle with? what to write about, we're getting it done at a rapid enough rate, uh, whether it's basis, what is the main thing that you might have found difficult? Love to know. What are the main challenges? Or if it's something else, let me know that as well. Finding time. Okay. So it's the speed of production. Beautiful. What else? Ryan, we'd love to hear from you. Sam, ditto. Deciding on the audience. Perfect. Uh, producing stuff. Nice. Elizabeth, consistency. Okay. So I reckon this, this is going to really help with all of those issues because those, those are the number one. I mean, you just outlined. I don't find time to do it because it's too hard and I have to sit down and do it. I don't know what to write about. I don't know who I'm writing for, right? And I don't know how to make it consistent. So let's jump into this and let me see if I can't solve some of those problems and then we'll get some practical stuff going on. So there's kind of four key components to this. And let me run through them. The first one is frequency. And let's start with that question of how often you should be writing or you can be writing. Because one of the biggest uh, objections I, I used to get in the past about marketing or content marketing to your existing clients was people used to say, I'm worried about bothering them. I'm worried about filling their inbox with stuff they don't value. I'm worried about kind of being spamming them. And I think what we're seeing right now, I mean, like personally, I like to send out a valuable piece of blog every, uh, every week. And consistently, we've been doing that for about two years. And uh, personally, I like to do weekly. I think some don't like to do it more than me. For me, the real differentiator, I think my internet just went a bit picky. The real differentiator for me is valuable. If you can share something that is valuable, the frequency becomes less and less of an issue. If you are going to hit people up with content that is not useful, doesn't really get too much in there, you know, every week, every fortnight, I totally agree. That's too much. But the difference is if you're hitting someone up with a high value piece of content on a weekly basis or a fortnightly basis, then chances hit the mark because people are going to value seeing it. You're, you're going to stand out amongst uh, the other stuff. But right now, and this is the key thing, right now, the news cycle is very quick. If you go onto news or you go on anywhere like that, you will see that there is at least 10 articles on that, on that newspaper every day, fresh articles about COVID, which tells us that people are consuming news very quickly. So I would put it to you right here and now, then frequency is very, very acceptable if your content is good. Are you with me so far? So let me ask it a different way. So I've been in the box. How often, let's do this daily. How often are you talking to clients right now? Like on a daily basis, how many different clients are you either answering a question for uh, on the phone, answering questions for, uh, emailing back when they've got queries? On average, how many clients are you speaking to on a daily basis? Okay, we've got two, Kathy's two to three, two to three a day, surprisingly quite small. Jeff, that's usually a good indicator of them well. James is six or seven clients. Right? I email all clients twice a week. Nice, Mariella. Ryan's got five. Okay. So you can see there's a, there's, a, there's a sort of mid range between two and possibly six or seven interactions you're having on a daily basis. I want to put it for you, to you that if you're having two to, two to three interactions with clients, you're probably answering questions 
that maybe five or six times six other clients are actually thinking about. In other words, for every client that asks, there's probably uh, there's probably more who would benefit from that or are thinking about it but just haven't reached out. Does that make sense? That's interesting. 60% open emails. And that's consistent. If we take industry averages are about 30% open rates, as Mariella said, open rates right now amongst advice firms are doubling easily. They are very much on the for Elizabeth, one to two day, perfect. So what topics are coming up? Elizabeth has already stolen a, a march on that. She says super to cash, mortgage versus investment, salary sacrifice. What else? Uh, webinar content, updating clients on COVID-19, uh, tax updates. Yeah, what other questions and queries are coming up when you, when you talk to clients? See, Jeff, you mentioned the thing or content, but the really easy, the thing here is if you're getting two to three queries a day and it's coming up time and time again, that's the stuff that potentially is fuel. Because right here and now, I'm going to talk about the second part, which is the second thing here is focus. Tax, COVID, love it, government benefits. And what you'll notice right now is, is I've, I mean, I've, I've read so many newsletters with generic articles, you know, um, 10 things you need to know about retirement, how to look after your health when you're over 60, which I'm in over 60, so that's not interesting for me. But right now, why is it easier to communicate? Because the focus is really, really clear. You know what they want to hear about, and so do they, which is why if you look at the newspapers for, um, for inspiration, it's very easy. The focus of what to produce and what to do is super clear right now. Um, the question is, let's say you are, you're looking for that fuel. We want to get the focus right. My suggestion to you, maybe some of you are already doing this, the easier way to capture, to, to produce content is not lose the stuff that's already going on. I would suggest that everybody right now should be keeping a journal. Just on a daily basis, grab one of our leveraged uh, books that we've got and just jump in on a daily basis and write down, what is it that came up today? What is an article that I read? What is something that, uh, that I shared? Because I think if you're capturing this, the beautiful thing is because there's such an open desire for information around this, whether it's, whether it's financially related, whether it's to do with the ATOs putting out, whether it's to do with mathematical models about it, whether it's to do with projections, you can look in that at the end, like twice a week or three times, however many your frequencies, and just pull something out. The other thing about the focus piece is if you get this right, and this is the key to producing on a really um, uh, prolific basis, keep your message really, really simple. You know, one story, one point you want to make, one thing you're going to share, really short, sweet, and clear, and don't mix the messages. I think one of the worst things you can do right now is out there and make, publish a blog that is about four things. When all you really want to do is make about one thing and then do your other blogs about the three things. Does that make sense? Are you with me so far? So I just want to recap on that. The first thing uh, we want to focus on is just making sure we can get the one, focus on one simple thing and make it about the, what's coming out at the moment. Are you with me? Okay. Point format. Uh, I often get asked, should I go for video? Should I go for blogging? Should I do podcasting? And one of the best bits of advice I was given, I asked, I think it was Taki actually, I said, dude, what's the best if you're going to do video blogging? And he smiled at me and he said, the best camera is the one that's in your pocket. Uh, Chase Jarvis published a similar book about it. Uh, the camera is the one that's with you. It's the one that, oh, well, it's, I think the easiest thing you can do right here and now is use the format that's going to work for you best. I'm going to talk about a few different formats. If you are the kind of person who can easily pull out your phone and just knock off a quick video message quickly, do that. If you're the kind of person, James, who finds it really easy to record an audio message first thing in the morning, do that. Make that your medium. If you find it easy to, easy to dictate a blog and then hand it over to someone else to, to put it up, do that. What I'm saying to you is, the focus should be on whatever you can use to get your message out. And that's the thing that's going to drive this. Um, two more things, or one more thing I want to touch on, and then we're going to dive into some of the doing. The, one of the best solutions for the white page thing, uh, you can kind of see in sitcoms. You know, you look at things like uh, sitcoms, how prolifically they're put out. Um, radio programs, anybody who listens to radio programs, you know they've got the same segments all the way through. You know, 8 o'clock Monday, it's this. 8.30, it's the, you know, the call up a a quiz segment, uh, even down to stories. You know, if we talked about the hero's journey as being uh, one of seven plot structures that we know, you can go and see a movie 
that will have that plot structure, whether it's Homer's Odyssey, Days of Thunder, or Star Wars, you're not bored of it. Uh, you know the framework, you know the structure, which, which draws you into the story, but it doesn't matter because you like to know that, you like the, the, the delivery of that. One of the best things you can do to make this easy when you're communicating is rather than just sort of, you know, you've got your topic you want to talk about, you've noted things out, you know uh, kind of your format, and then you sit there and you're, gonna go, you're not going to go freestyle, we're going to use a framework. And by using this framework every single time, you're going to hit six marks. And by doing that, you're going to make it really, really, really simple to just plug your story, your information, your sharing, your summary, your, your points into that framework. And that's what's going to turbocharge this. You with me? But for me, I want to share one thing, one final thing. I think the real ninja tip here, I've kind of mentioned it, which is, if anybody remembers scrapbooking, you're probably just as old as me. But that's what we want to be doing right now. Uh, every conversation you have, every topic you raise, every article you read, it's worth capturing it in kind of your version of a, of a scrapbook. Now, you can use a, a notebook. The tool that I really like to use is, is Pocket. Uh, we actually have a shared account um, within the program. Not a lot of people use it, but I am going to start turbocharging it. And if anybody wants to get access to this, Pocket is essentially, it's a shared essentially a digital scrapbook. So I can be reading an article on my phone and it can be about, hmm, that's a really interesting point about savings and investing. And I can hit, uh, I can hit share and then save it, save it as, a, as a link. It goes straight into my pocket and then everybody else can see it. And what do you, like, what do you think when I have that time when I go, oh, I want to put, I'll go, I remember that upload. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to put it into a quick email and say, hey, hey, Elizabeth, I hope you're well. I wanted to share this article. I read it the other day. I think it's great for this reason. This reason, I think it really explains right what's going on in the markets. Anyway, over to you. Let me know what you think of it. And this is a strategy called attribution, which is utilizing other content framed by you in terms of what you think is good about it, what is worthwhile in order to mean that you're putting stuff out, but you're not already, already able to self uh, sort of produce it. Does that make sense? Do me a favor. I'm, I'm going to get into the practical side, but I'd love to know useful about what we've spoken about so far uh has there been something useful about sort of talking about frequency have we answered that question about how often is 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 good uh in terms of getting a focus you know taking away the need to sort of think things up and look at what's questions are coming has it has the format piece been useful so far or is it about having a set framework like like sitcoms where you can just talk to that kathy says yes anything else what's what what how I've spoken about so far that everything we talked about, if you took that and you put that to work, you think it would help you. Would love to know. Martin, Michael, put his hand up. I never know what the hand up means. It's uh, pop in the chat box. We'd love to know what's been useful and we're going to get stuck in some practice. Scrapbook, sharing articles. Thank you, Brian. Love it. We think about doing weekly with five articles of videos. I enjoyed. Do you think that's wrong? Kathy, I'm, uh, this is the second time and I'm not picking on you that you come up with the, the five articles thing. I would stay away from the newsletter. Uh, I think if you can come up and author one or two or even three articles a week, do it in a very personal style. I'll teach you how to do this. We're going to get much better cut through because it's going to be short. It's going to be succinct. It's going to sound like you. The biggest problem right now with, if you look at what's been doing it in the online digital marketing space, it is personal. It's short form. It's quick. It's to the point. It's using casual language. So I think keep your five articles, grab them, but I'd, I'd choose the three that really matter and I'd publish them separately on three special days. One at a time, absolutely spot on. What do you mean by everyone can see Pocket? Who are we sharing this with? Martin, it's my Pocket account. Uh, and what I will do is I'll give you a login and you can log in and you can see all of the, 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 the uh, articles that I've, sh I, I've saved. Now, if you wanted to set up your own or you wanted to you know, uh, contribute to that article, then the articles that you saved would also be almost like scrapbook there, but uh, you can set up your own account and it will just basically find your own uh, articles that you find. Alternatively, uh, you can, uh, yeah, you can, sorry, buy, buy mine, log in and use it. Yes, I agree. Kathy, look, yeah, I, weekly roundup really does depend on, on weekly roundups. You look at stuff from Tim, Ferris and Noah, Kogan is another one, does it? It's one line, bang, 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 and it links through. If that's what you want to do personally, I prefer in terms of given it's a communication between you and I as your advisor, I prefer it in a personal style. But if, hey, if that works for you and gets open rates, go for it. It's just not what I found works uh, for me and 
not for the sort of uh, business I've worked with. We're currently doing one webinar a week. Should we continue with this or stop? I would do one webinar a week. I think more than one web webinar a week is probably too much. That doesn't mean you can't do communications outside of that. Bear in mind a webinar is an hour. Uh, and right here and now, you are probably going to get people to consume a small part of it uh, or attend the whole thing. But more than that, I think it's probably a bit of overkill. Cool. Yes, my love. She says I've been doing it for a long time. I'm going to do it for a long more time as well. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about practically. Here's what I would do if I wanted to turbocharge it right now. The first thing I would do is just focus on the capture. Uh, I, by the way, I do this myself. Uh, I don't know if I've got my book here. Um, yeah, I started doing, is it here? I started doing journaling at the beginning of the year. I went out and bought myself one of these. And I read an article, I can't remember who it was by, and I'd always, I've always struggled with, with journaling because it, that idea of going long form and having to write long form stuff, it sort of never really gelled. And he said, the best way to do it is bullet points. And since then, it's, it's worked a treat. Every day, well, most days I'll just walk in and I'll go, all I have to do is write down one, two, or three bullet points from the ha things that happen during the day. Here's what I'd suggest. If you can grab yourself a notebook, if, if you can, make it something nice, like a moleskin, right, soft skin. Even if it's just something that you can keep with you, even if it's a small one, I just want you to jump in every day. Just capture one, two bullet points. What's one question that you had today that felt familiar? What was one topic that captured your eye? Or what was one thing you read that stuck, which you can either put in pocket or you can capture? And if you grab that two or three times a week when you sit down, you can then go, okay, and have a look at this. And you can just, just choose and go, okay, and this is the one thing comes in. I'm going to choose one story, one story I told to a client this week, or one story I heard, or I'm just going to choose one idea, the idea that uh, maybe it's not time to invest quite yet. Um, maybe one tip, one little tip that you gave to a client, one piece of insight, one question you had from someone else. I wanted to share with more people. Because generally if one client's asking, uh, there's more people who want to know or one news article that you read and you want to share. You with me? Has everybody just out of interest, have you got one already that having had this conversation, you're going, yeah, I've got one story I had this week, or I've got one thing, question I answered from, from, my, uh, from a client? Hopefully you do. The next part is really about sketching the framework out. Uh, and remember I talked about the importance of, of having a clear framework? I approach every communication, I'm gonna walk through you this in a second, six parts. The first bit is going to be an intro. It's going to be something you do every single time. Hey, it's Stu here. I hope you're well. Something personal. I'm just sat here trying to do a webinar with my daughter, six, Hermione, who's bouncing on the uh, punch bag. Uh, and I wanted to share one little thing. This is the best tip I've given to someone this week on how to react if they're in an investing space. That's my tip and that's my intro. Um, then I'm going to give the information. I'm going to tell them the information I need them to know. That's either my tip, my insight, my question, my response. And then I'm, going to, then I'm going to give them the point. In other words, this is the point of sharing this or this is how I make it relevant. I'm going to summarize and then I'm going to give them a next step or an action. Um, step four is once you know the structure, maybe you've scoped it out and eventually if you do this enough, you'll get, you'll get good at doing this on the cuff. You're going to make the decision to get it done. Now, there's three options you can really have here and how you can deliver this. So I'm going to give you the breakdown why some people choose the one instead of the other. It's kind of a descending model. At the top, you've got video. Now, if you can grab your phone and a good mic, or you can grab your, your laptop and uh, a, decent, uh, a decent sort of uh, camera as well, uh, and you can just pour on the cuff like that, the benefit of there is you've got three options there. Not only can you give it off to a, uh, a video guy like, uh, like Diogo or someone else who can do post-production for you, you can also transcribe it really, really quickly. In other words, give it across to someone. They can quickly put it through an author or a, or a rev and bang. You've got pretty much a decent article ready to go. And you can then give it to someone else who's going to copy edit it in the background. In other words, they're going to grab it. They're going to clean it up. They're going to make it look good and they'll put it on a blog for you. So bang, you've got a video, you've got a transcription, and you've got a copy edit. If you do audio, which again is totally valid, you can use like a Voxer to get a message out. Um, you can still record the audio and get it transcribed, easy, and then have someone copy edit it. And then, obviously, you can't get the video. The final bit is if you write it, 
you can get it copy edited, but you obviously can't do any of the rest of it. So if you wanted to send it out as a, as a Voxer link, like a link they can click on and can listen to it, then you can't do that. The final step in this is the important bit, which is if you get this right, you sh should be able to hand it off to someone in your team. If you've got a VO, this is perfect. If you've got a business operations person, if you've got someone in your team who's really interested in this, someone, someone like Mariella, who's not only enjoys marketing, but she's, she's damn good at it. Uh, the key bit in here is, is have a process. And as you can see, this, those of you on the program, this is, this is taken from my module hands-free. And this literally tells people step-by-step step what to do when they open up our Otter account and there's a recording in there. And it says, if it's, a, if it's a file note, here's what you should do with it. If it's an email to a client, here's what to do with it. If it's a blog, here's what to do with it. And finally, if it's a client message. And this is the key bit, because really, if you get this right, I don't want you to be the person who's producing the content, whether it's video, audio, or written, and then having to jump in the back end of your website, upload it, you know, publish it, schedule, put it out, whatever it might be, send it in an email, send an SMS. You can design the process. That means that someone else does that. That is going to help you get this kind of regularity together. You with me so far? Final piece in the puzzle is kind of borrowing from Elon Musk here. I think if everybody jumps on this and you start doing this now, by the time this situation kind of evens out and maybe that frequency of communication drops down, it's not like a, uh, two to three times a week. It drops back to maybe fortnightly or maybe weekly if you're so confident. The benefit you can get here is you can start to batch your communication, which is you are working together on your uh, marketing. We would have a process every 90 days, James. We would sit down and we'd go, what are the top five most important themes? we pull out your, question, your, uh, your, your scrapbook or your, your notebook and we go, what's coming up? What are the stories? that?" Are and we would choose those themes in advance. We would, go, we would lay them out. And then we would, every month, we would sit down and we'd produce three, four, five, six, seven articles, really easy if you're dictating, all at once and line them up. And that's the way that uh, we've been able to, with Jen's help, make sure that at all times we're at least two, three, four, five weeks ahead without having to produce content all the time. Because frankly, there are going to be some weeks where you don't feel like producing content and it's not coming to you. You with me so far? Hopefully this has been useful. Now, has everyone got the worksheet? I thought we'd do a bit of a live action in this because I guess what I'd love to see off the back of this is I'd love to see everybody take this and produce their first two to three. Has everyone got their, their worksheet hand, handy? If you haven't, I'm going to put it in the box. One of those ones where there's two ways you can rock this. You can either listen, which is fine, or you can do it with me. So here's what I want to know. Um, Straight off the bat, I want you to give me one question that you've had this week that you think would be useful to write about, or a conversation that you had to think is useful to share with other people, or a topic that you found yourself dealing with more than once this week, and then I'm going to use the template that we just uh, worked on to put this to work. So I want you to type in the box, what's one topic, question, theme, and preferably one that you've actually had from clients uh, recently. I'm just going to bring up the worksheet that you've got. Just pop it in the box. I'd love to know. Let's make this real. Let's do this as a real thing. I'm going to show you how to produce this stuff. A lot of people say to me, oh, you can do this because, you know, uh, you find it really easy. And I say to them, actually, I find this really easy because I found a way of uh, that makes really easy for me to do it. I've, I've just practiced and practiced. I think the hardest thing to do is to try and, um, to try and get your hand, handle on or try and get your head around things that just don't, if you're not a video person, don't do it. If you're not a written person, don't do written. Um, do what works for you. Uh, Martin Morris, what relief insurance company is offering on premiums? Per, uh, pupil to God. Sam, is it time to start investing yet? Love that. Uh, James, subtitles on T is reading for children. Uh, great. Uh, we had a lot of questions about job keeper scheme and tax deductions. Great. Perfect. People want to know about that. We need to break that down to one thing. Convert super to cash. Shall I invest in the mortgage or pull funds out? All good ones. Okay. Let me jump in and share a couple of things. First thing, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, worksheet I gave you are a couple of check-in communications. And don't underestimate the, the power of just a really simple check-in. You know, jump, turning around and saying, hey, Jen or hey, team member, can you just shoot through an email to Stu on my behalf? Can you use check-in number one? 
Hey, Stu, I hope all is well in your life because I just want to pop my head in and check in with you if there's anything you need from us. There's no need to respond if there isn't, but I'd love to know if there is. Or, it's been a, uh, hey, Stu, I hope all is well. With everything that's going on in the markets right now, I just wanted to drop you a quick email on whether you need anything or have any queries. And you could do this for five different clients every week and bang, straight away you've got part of your checking communications. You can even have a call if you want. Uh, one of the challenges though, if you, if you have that call situation, um, sometimes you end up playing a lot of, um, a lot of uh, what's it called, phone tag. So let's, let's go with, let's assume we're producing something that we can send out more widely. Mate, um, is it time to start investing? Good, Mark, good, uh, good, good topic. Yeah. So if I was going to pull this out, again, would you do this via video or would you do it as a written thing or do you think an audio message is best for you? Uh, well, I guess my default would go be to go to written because that's my, my safe space, but potentially a video. Okay, so the first bit here I'd go with is sort of an intro. And I always like to add a little personal message. Um, just something about, if it particularly works really well if you're doing audio, kind of share people on work here. I've just, you know, it's a hot day, but I wanted to shoot this through. Just some thoughts. In other words, just give a bit of impact. So your intro might be, hey, whoops, hey, it's Sam here. And what's something personal you can put in that's happened in the last couple of days that you'd like to share with clients? Uh, I've just gotten through another week in isolation. What's the main thing you've, you've been doing this week in isolation? Oh, right. Uh, working. <laughs> talking, to, well, talking to clients, basically. Anything else? Uh, so working, I've been having... Yeah, drinking. <laughs> some great uh, chat. Beautiful. Okay. So what's the, what's the main sort of reason? You're about to share something about investing and we want to make it hook. We want to make it something that's very, very sort of useful for people to... Or them want to really listen on so one of the hooks you might say should uh, should i stay or should i go let's share a bit of information what's the one thing that you would like to share with uh, your clients about this question of investing now or not what's the one concept that we can get across the one question that you think is most important well, I think the, the overall theme that I try and impart on people is that it like that it's in two camps. It depends, basically. If you're old, not yet. If you're young, yes. Comes down, love it, to one factor, which is age. Beautiful. I like that. It's nice and simple. So, I think it's relevant is, so obviously, what do you define as old versus young? like within a couple of years of retirement versus say 10 plus years out. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. In summary, this is really writing itself. Uh, investing is about time. That's the point, isn't it? And off the back of this, if there was one action, like if someone wanted to know more information or uh, you wanted them to do something for it before they, you know, invest their money or whatever, what would you like them to do? Give you a call? Yeah. Jump on a webinar? Yeah, no, nah, let's have a phone call and discuss their specific circumstances. Cool. Okay. So in that case, I would jump, I would grab that. And personally, you know me, I really like uh, audio. So I would typically grab my Voxer and I follow the structure. So this is the communication that's going to be a Voxer link to see how useful it can be to sort of just use audio for this stuff. So I'm going to grab my, my notes here. Here you go. Hey, guys, it's Stu here. Another week in isolation. And I've read some books and I've got through some good works. Uh, I'm, one of the questions that's coming up time and time again when it comes to investing is kind of like the clash. You know, should I stay or should I go? Should I invest now? Money? So I wanted to answer this to us. You're wondering about it. And look, for me, I'm going to break it down to one thing. For me, it's about age. Uh, in short, Generally, it's easiest to deal with when you've got time. They tend to even themselves out. But if there is an event coming up in the near future where you need to finance it, then potentially it's not the time to do it. So in short, uh, the question I get asked is, well, when you talk about age, what is all age? What is a short time frame? For me, I think if there's something coming up, whether it's retirement or there's a massive capital outlay that you uh, need to have in, in the next two years, that's a time to really think about not investing in the market. But outside of that, potentially you could uh, do well to invest. So in summary, uh, there's a lot of talk going on right now. But for me, the number one thing as to whether I'm going to invest or not is timeframes, whether you've got time for it. 
I want to share that. If you've got any questions for it, though, if that want a little bit more information, you'd like to talk about it, please uh, shoot me through an email or give me a call and we can talk through it because I definitely don't want anyone making investment decisions right in this, in this here and now unless they're in full sort of possession of facts. That's it. Uh, I'll speak to you later. Hope you have a great week. Okay. Thank you, Sam. So that's like one minute 25 it took to record that. And I personally think that would be quite easy to send out either as just a, a voice message or alternatively even get it transcribed and send it out. What do you reckon? Does anybody else want to have a go? Or is, uh, have we answered that question? There's a few different ways you could do this. You can absolutely do this uh, with video if you wanted to. It's very, very easy to transcribe this as you can see. But the key thing is if you can get in the habit of doing this on a regular basis, like literally, you get in the habit of doing two or three. I don't care if you do five of these and most of them, like two of them sound terrible, but you send out two, you've got to have share. Now there is an opportunity to look at what conversations you have. Everyone you get, everyone you get asked it. Front foot, ask the question, it comes around for any renewals or reviews. You're going to end up with clients that are very, they remember the fact that you stepped into the home more. So, do one thing to bring it home. Um, one of the great books I read on habit forming was from a guy called James Clare. And he talked about a bunch of case studies, which were all about how to get stuff done. And one of the key things to mention is if you can ask three questions, whenever you're talking to someone who's come along and they want to get something done. So I'm going to ask them now. I want you to let me know, based on what we've spoken about, how would you see yourself putting this to work in your business? If so, what would your first three communications be about? And equally important, when do you plan to send the first one? Pop in the chat box, because I guess, there's, as I mentioned, there's a few different ways you can come along, digest the information, but if your intention for being here was that you wanted to get something done, you wanted to turn this into action, then I would love you to sort of let me know so I can maybe even keep you uh, accountable for it. How are you planning to put what we've spoken about to work? What will your first three communications be about? And when do you plan on sending the first one? Pop it in the chat box and let me know. Uh, and if you are serious about this and you feel like you need a bit more help with it, I'm more than happy if you can email me through. Let me know if you need to know what camera to use. You need to know what audio to use. You want to know the best blog platform. You want a copy of my process. I'm happy to do this and share it with you. As long as you can do me a favor and share with me, what are you going to do with it? Uh, so pop it in the chat box. I'll give you a mo. Let me know. Uh, how are you planning to put what we've spoken about to work? What will your first three communications be? And when do you plan to send the first one? Let me know, Elizabeth, Jacob. Tax time is deferred. What you need to do, I have cash, should invest, benefits. Interest Saturday, you absolute legend. I love it. I love when people just go, you know what, I'm going to do this. And they, and they set themselves the time. It's accountability, it's brilliant. Martin, I'd love to hear from you. Mark, haven't heard a whole webinar from you, Mark. I'd love what you want to do. Rachel, we're in Canada. Kathy, of course you are. Kathy, how are you? There you go, halfway from around the world, and you're the first to, to react. Jacob, ditto, what your plan is. Adelia, Martin, love it. You're going to start working on a two, three, four interest plan. And the price I create, would like one for the end of the week. Topics, insurance, premium answers, love it. Easiest one to write is, I got this question from a client this week. It's around this. I wanted to answer it in case other people have got the same question. Love it. Elizabeth, we'll try for one week, once a week communication. Love it. Put in the marketing plan. Tax, cash, and super. Government, COVID, super. Absolutely legendary. I love it. Cool. Martin, Kathy, Elizabeth, hats off to you. Kathy's going to try a boxer. Yeah, I would do, I would hope, look, my take on it, sitting down and setting up a video requires background lighting. Sitting down and writing is easy, but you can just know. Audio and a framework is the fastest way of getting this stuff out. And I, I've got to have it now where I can sit down with my box, with my audio, and I will have three or four blogs done on the cuff last thing I leave here on Friday. I don't care if two of them are terrible and they never see the light of day. It's the fact that two of them can then be copied by Jen, who's very good at turning this into really coherent stuff and taking from there. Guys, useful. Um, I wanted to make this quick, sharp, and focused. And therefore, I ran through a bunch of stuff quickly. Hopefully, my voice isn't failing too badly. Uh, but I hope this has been useful, guys. I'm planning on running, running a few communication and crisis thing. Um, my goal is to run them with people who are, so want to come along and take advantage of, of, I guess, the opportunity we've got right now to get 
some of the uh, some of the I guess the the trust issues that have occurred over the few years. The next one I'm going to run is about partnerships. I think right now more so than ever, it's important to be able to maintain relationships with existing partnerships as well as get on the front foot. So if you if you'd like to join me for that next Friday at one o'clock, uh, please feel free. Same deal. Other than that, Jacob, James, Kathy, Mark, good to see you again. Martin, always good to have you on board. Adelia, Rachel, how are you going? Ryan, mate, thank you for coming. Sam, always a pleasure. Uh, and Warwick as well. It's been a while. Elizabeth as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, just let me know. Has this been useful? Um, what was there something that you found most useful? Is there something more you'd like from this? I'm, I'm, I'm sort of here for a bit if you need to chat about something, but I want to make sure that whatever we're putting out is you. Because I think, as I mentioned, right here and now, I mean, my take on it is I think if many small businesses we can support to get through this, let's get that clean, the, the better. But uh, yeah, hopefully this is useful. If I got the wrong, all this way through, I've got the wrong damn camera. Awesome. No, that's the right one. Uh, good to get your red dust, Elizabeth. Can you flick me the Voxer message, Sam? I totally can. Uh, I will absolutely do that. I will shoot it through to everyone. Now, someone's been q and a me as well. I don't know what that says. Uh, Martin, ah, I just realized you're over there. Lovely. Uh, cool. Guys and girls, thank you so much for joining me. As, as I mentioned, I hope this has been useful. I hope you're having a, I hope you got a good week ahead of you. For those of you uh, on the program, uh, I will see you first thing next week. I think we've got a uh, live Fridays is the main thing I want to sort of point out to everybody, which is I'm really excited about. But other than that, if you don't need anything else, let me know. Stay safe, people. Don't get food poisoning like I did. It's not much fun, I'll tell you that. Cool, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna go and deal with the little missy downstairs. Uh, guys and girls, have a great weekend. Stay safe and I will now catch you later. So there you have it, communication in a crisis. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, I'm sure you, as a practice owner, have many, many tales that you could tell about times when you have got on the front foot, uh, been able to allay some fears, maybe when it hasn't worked so well. I, I remember running a workshop in Brisbane ages ago, and uh, one particular, we're having this conversation about you know communication and allaying clients' fears, and one particular advisor told me this story about uh, an elderly client who'd phoned up a uh, Greek background, and this is the time that Greece was in a whole bunch of financial trouble, freaking out and about five minutes later they concluded the call as I was told and the client was calm clear and ultimately not panicking and I remember I said to him how long did that take and he said five minutes and I kind of stole from the Picasso quote and said no no I think it took you about 15 to 20 years to be able to do that well and kind of that's that's one of the key learnings from this this is one of those skills that the more you do it the more you get on the front foot the more you're capable of having these conversations the easier it becomes uh, for, for, to calm clients down and ultimately for them to trust you and the long game rather than the short game. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like more, uh, as you may know if you've, you've listened to a few episodes of, the, of these, uh, we launched uh, a practice success portal not that long ago. Uh, and this is a free practice management portal and community where you can jump in. You can access a whole range of uh, back recordings of our masterclasses in addition to our practice success module which is kind of a foundational module which walks you through five pieces of training that I conduct with most businesses I begin working with and it'll also give you the opportunity to engage with other people in the program and uh, I also share live events that I run uh, which often most of the time to be honest we, we, we make available some guest passes so if you'd like to get involved a little bit more in what I do beyond this podcast if you'd like to see a little bit more uh, of the kind of businesses I work with and really get involved, uh, feel free to head over to aldere.com.au. Uh, look for the free portal uh, page, jump in there, fill in the application and we will get you on to the platform as soon as we possibly can. Other than that, I hope you've enjoyed this Finnovator and stay tuned for the next episode.